journey of the SME owner from doer to investor, uh, the point at which the entrepreneur can step back and view himself or herself as steward of the capital that the business generates. Now, in your work at the, in, at the present day, working with your, your clients, is that a difficult transition for some business owners, business founders? I would say it's the most difficult transition. Right. Why? Because um, you, you talk about doing things my way. Mm -hmm. Well, small businesses are sort of mini dictatorships. They... And, and they're very, very closely tied to the personality of the, the, uh, the, of the owner themselves. And it's a little bit like it's a little bit like the relationship between a mother and a child. Um, you know, for the longest time, or well, it's gestating, mm -hmm. the child is a physical extension of the of the mother oh, yeah it's 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 it grows within it mm -hmm. um and is dependent entirely on it and even after birth there is this you know strong sense of of belongingness and oneness with the mother sure. well business owners business owners are very much the same with their businesses and you know, they become a part of them and that's fine but there has to come a stage when the character of the of the business and its ability to to survive as an independent social entity sure. a living thing has to be separated from the actual from, from the actual um, owner themselves and i think the the job is to to find and it, this is not a question of growth this is a question of maturity mm -hmm. of of replacing of being replaceable doesn't mean you have to replace yourself but of mm -hmm. being replaceable and having a business that fully respects and is able to pay for the three very distinct roles or the, let's say the two very distinct roles that every owner manager has so in other words the business has to pay for the real work that the owner is doing often you will find owners are doing two to three jobs sure so they're doing all of the sales they're doing you know a lot of the admin and they're doing other jobs yeah. as well part operational part financial if they were you were to take them out you would not be able to find people mode. to do a you would never be able to find anybody to do that one job mm -hmm, mm -hmm. but you'd have to find maybe two two and a half three mm -hmm. at which point if the business can't afford to buy or pay for those three distinct jobs what the business owner is effectively doing is subsidizing the business with his own labor sure. so labor needs to be fairly paid for mm -hmm. number one and number two the business also needs to be making a return on the capital investment that the business owner has made. So most business people start the business with whatever capital they can get together, whether that's a thousand euros or 10,000, whatever it is that they need. And nobody will give them any money except them. So they, they dive into savings or borrowings or credit card or something because there is nobody who believes in them the way that they believe in them in that second the moment that you take one euro of your savings to invest in yourself even if it's only using your savings to draw down instead of a salary while the business is being built up you are actually fulfilling two roles the the first role is the investor because you as the owner of your savings are having a conversation with you as the entrepreneur and you are persuading yourself that this is a really good investment good risk to take yeah it's a good risk to take mm -hmm. and and of course because you are the easiest person to fool you say oh sure look it take it on your own it'll, side absolutely. it'll be fine <laughs> and but what what you fail to do at that point is you 
you fail to make the distinction between that investment yeah. and your own it's job. So too much every, emotion involved. So, yeah. so every time the business the business comes up against a crunch, mm -hmm. you know, on let's say it's it's payroll day on Monday. Mm -hmm you don't know what to do on Friday because you don't have the money there. Over the weekend, you have a series of discussions with yourself and then, surprise, surprise, the negotiation with your investor says, I'm going to sell my watch or I'm going to ask my wife or I'm going to go to my parents or I'm going to mortgage the house. I'm going to do something because you're such an easy touch. Yeah. You, you know, the, and... What I try to teach entrepreneurs is to recognize and at least give some space to the role of the investor that you also have because let's say the minimum that you the minimum is one percent. One percent of all your time just be the investor. Well, how, what does one percent mean? In a year of 365 days, let's round it up to 400. That's one day a quarter. Mm -hmm. And that'd be four, four days a year that you, so that's one day a quarter. All right. What you should be doing is taking one day every quarter in which you have absolutely no operational responsibilities whatsoever. And you do what an investor would do on that day, which is to review the capital that you've invested to see how well the business is performing, mm -hmm. to review the strategy to have a good look at the quality of the people who are running the business, mm -hmm. to do some high level thinking around the marketplace, the offering, the, the, the margin structure. Mm -hmm. I and mean, a lot of that requires financial intelligence. You have to be financially fluent. You have to look at the balance sheet. You have to start thinking about intrinsic value. And if you do that once every quarter for one whole day, you know, an investor, what would an investor do? An investor would insist on having reports mm -hmm. that they could read through and ask questions mm -hmm. on a few days before that meeting. They would want one or two people to be on call so they could answer those questions during the investor presentation. And so you would have to try and, even in your own little business, try and replicate that. Sure. Maybe you would have an advisor with you who would be asking hard questions. And because the person you're asking most of the hard questions about, about is you. Yeah, it's, <laughs> that hard makes, it, it, it's far easier to avoid it. But if you, are, if you don't give the investor the respect that he deserves, then you will find that the time when the investor starts getting nasty and demanding returns is exactly the time when, you, when the business is in crisis and it's too late. Mm -hmm.